Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience 101. Today we're going to talk about the six layers of the mammalian cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the mammalian brain. Other animals, like reptiles and birds, do have pallial structures that might resemble the cerebral cortex. However, a sheet with neurons containing six layers can only be found in the mammalian brain. Let's take a look at these six layers. The first layer, also known as the molecular layer, is the most superficial layer. This layer only contains about 0.5% of all neurons that can be found in the six layers. So rather than neurons, this layer mostly consists of axons and dendrites that come from pyramidal neurons that are found in the other layers. On top of that, there are also glial cells. Now, the few neurons that can be found in this layer receive input from the thalamus as well as from other cortical regions. The main function of the molecular layer is to integrate cross-modal information. This input comes from horizontal fibers, which can be clearly identified in a Weigert stain. The second layer, also called the external granular layer, and the third layer, also called the external pyramidal layer, are often categorized together. Indeed, although there are some differences between these layers, they are functionally somewhat similar. In some regions, a clear distinction between layer 2 and layer 3 is hard to make. Now, layer 2 is composed of small pyramidal neurons, also known as granule cells. Layer 3 contains somewhat larger pyramidal neurons. Both layer 2 and 3 receive cortical input to a large part from the other hemisphere. As such, these layers are thought to integrate interhemispheric signals. Besides pyramidal cells, which are excitatory, there are also small inhibitory cells in both layers. The ratio between inhibitory and pyramidal cells is slightly higher in layer 2 compared to layer 3. Besides input from distal regions, neurons in layer 2 and 3 also receive input from local layer 4 pyramidal neurons. A large amount of output of layer 2 and 3 neurons go to layer 5 pyramidal neurons. The internal granular layer is the fourth layer of the cortex. The main input to layer 4 comes from the thalamus and consists of primarily sensory information. As such, layer 4 makes up a larger proportion in, for example, the visual and somatosensory cortex when compared to, let's say, the motor cortex. For example, visual information entering the eyes that travel through the thalamus subsequently go to layer 4 of the primary visual cortex. Some additional input comes from intracortical regions. Excitatory cells in layer 4 mostly consist of pyramidal cells but can also be stellate cells depending on the region and the species. Layer 4 neurons have strong connections to local layer 2 and layer 3 neurons. The internal pyramidal layer is the fifth layer of the cortex. It is composed of large pyramidal neurons, so-called bat cells. Layer 5 bat cells receive input from layer 2 and 3 and have projecting axons to other parts of the brain, including the thalamus, internal capsule, the spinal cord and other cortical areas. Given that layer 5 is the main output layer for corticospinal output, it is no surprise that layer 5 makes up a large proportion in the primary motor cortex. So in short, layer 5 can be seen as the main output layer, whereas layer 4 is the main input layer. Finally, there is the multiform layer, which is the deepest and thus the sixth layer of the cortex. As the name suggests, it's composed of a variety of neuronal types, including pyramidal, stellate and other kinds of neurons. Layer 6 has many reciprocal connections to the thalamus. That is, layer 6 neurons from one cortical column connect with thalamus neurons that provide input to the same cortical column. And these connections can be both inhibitory and excitatory. It has been proposed that this reciprocal loop is important for the modulation of thalamic signals, which is crucial for attenuating or strengthening signals. This is known as gain control and it helps sensory information to adapt to the current situation. Now, although it seems that all these layers are quite separable, the six cortical layers work together to process information. There are strong reciprocal connections between layers resulting in an inhibitory excitatory balance that can dynamically change depending on the current state of the brain. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this introduction to the six cerebral cortical layers. 
If you did, consider giving this video a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.